It looks like any other gym in America. A place, for better or worse, revolving around the line between winning and losing. But for one night, this gym in Wisconsin redrew the line into a thread, tying two teams together in a game no one filmed but few will forget. A game where the biggest possession never changed the score and the best shot never touched the rim. Vince Lombardi is right. Winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. However, I hope he meant winning a game of life because that's what we did that particular day. John Tell Franklin, captain of the Milwaukee Madison Knights, expected to be at the gym February 7th, starting at guard against out-of-conference rival DeKalb High from Illinois. That changed when his mother, Kalitha, was rushed to the hospital. First thing that popped in my head, like, uh, I'm going to lose my mother. What am I going to do? Lose my mother. After a five-year fight with cervical cancer, Kalitha Franklin died that afternoon. News reached players and coaches quickly. Coach Aaron Womack Jr. and several teammates went directly to the hospital. I asked them, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything we can do as coaches, as a team? And I also asked them, hey, should we cancel the game? What do you want us to do? Because well, we're canceled. I told them uh, play, you know, because uh, that's, that's all I wanted them to do was just to play. While John Tell remained at the hospital, his coaches and teammates returned to the Madison gym. DeKalb was there, ready to play, but aware of the special circumstances. I got the sense that uh, it was almost maybe going to be some therapy for, for some of their players to, to get on the floor and, and get away from that situation for an hour or two. In the midst of a close game in the second quarter, the gym began to buzz. I noticed that the coach walked in the gym and he had a player with him. I looked and it was Zantel. When I walked in, my whole team came and uh, greeted me by the door and uh, gave me hugs and uh, said everything will be all right. You know, felt good. As I looked up in the stands, people in the stands saw what's going on. They walked over by John Tell to hug him, let him know that everything was going to be all right. Uh, it was a, a breathless moment, uh, a moment I'll never forget. But John Tell didn't come to the gym just to watch. Actually, I decided to play. It was hard for me to just sit there and watch him play without me in the game. And I wanted, and I decided to play. John Tell could play, but the rule was clear. Once the team rosters entered into the scorebook 10 minutes before game time, adding a new player is a technical foul. DeKalb would get two free throws, but in a two-point game, they told the referee they didn't want them. I told them, I understand that you're here to enforce the rules, but I believe that there are extenuating circumstances and not charging them a technical foul was the right thing to do. And I turn to him and I say, well, coach, I'm, I'm sorry. Our job is to enforce the rules and we can't compromise the integrity of the game. The DeKalb coach called the team together. After a brief discussion, senior Darius McNeil volunteered to take the shots. I was just thinking in my mind, how was I going to shoot it? And, you know, how was, you know, the crowd going to react and how was John, John Taylor going to react? But with two to shoot in a two-point game, these shots would be different. All of a sudden, the kid just takes the ball and just, he doesn't even shoot it. He just... I just threw it in front of me about two or three feet and it just bounced out of bounds. My first reaction was, wow, they picked a bad free throw shooter. We've got another shot. He does the same thing. And after he did that, the spectators began to cheer. And it was, the, it was just the strangest thing. I told the players that are on the bench, stand up, give them a round of applause. I sort of just tipped my head to the coach and said, thank you. At that point, I knew that we had done the right thing. I knew that, that that was the right decision to make. And, and that was simply the, the recognition, I think, that we needed to, to realize that, uh, that we were teaching the kids the right thing to do. 
For Darius McNeil, the two misses fulfilled his coach's instructions. For John Tell Franklin, the two misses held one message. Love. That's all it was that day was love. John Tell played the rest of the game and his team won by 15 points. But beyond victory or defeat, players and coaches left a lesson behind that February night. A lesson on a line that now connects two schools. There really wasn't a winner or a loser. It was really much of a, a friendship that was created that day. To see Jontel come in, that just made my day right there because if you can lose a parent that morning and come back and play in the game, that's so incredible strength. I learned that, uh, that the trust that I put in these kids and uh, the judgment of character has been correct. That our kids are, 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 are great kids. They're high moral character, uh, ethically uh, correct kids that uh, know the difference from right and wrong and, and when they're put to the test, they're gonna make the correct decision.